Hi everyone, so today's live class, we're gonna focus on back bends. And remember, these classes will now be saved on IGTV. I don't know why it doesn't save it to the stories anymore. They must have changed something in Instagram, but I am also recording it and putting it on YouTube as well. So you can find it on Rachel Silverman Yoga on YouTube. And I have lots of old classes on there too, as well as the ones from the past couple of weeks if you wanna check out my YouTube channel. For the back bends, you probably will need a strap. We're gonna do some poses with the yoga strap. And if you have the yoga strap, you wanna put a little loop in it for your foot. Now, if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a towel, um, you can use other props, or I'll always give you modifications. You don't have to use the strap, okay? But it will come in handy if you have one for some of those back bending poses. So we'll give everyone a minute or so to sign on. Keep in mind when we do back bends that it's challenging, okay? It's hard, even for me, back bends are one of the hardest things, which is why we have to practice them, okay? It's important to be flexible and well-rounded in our yoga practice, not just in one area. Hi, Debbie, welcome. And back bends, really, they're a combination of a lot of things, shoulder opening, lats, right? Not just the back, the hip flexors as well. Everything on the front side of the body is being stretched when we do back bends. So keep in mind that each one of you is going to feel these poses in different places and that's okay. So it is now officially noon so we can get started. Let's start in child's pose. So make your way to your mats. Again, all you need is maybe a strap, a towel, water, anything else is fine. Big toes together, knees wide, bring your forehead down and stretch your arms forward. Hi Emily. All right, start to take a couple deep breaths here in your child's pose, just settling in, noticing how your body feels today before we start to move. Connect to your breath, finding that ujjayi breath, breathing in and out through the nose, slightly constricting the back of the throat so you can hear the sound of your breath. And start to make each inhale and exhale even longer because you want to keep in mind as we flow that that's the pace of the class. So you might be faster or slower than my cues. That's okay. Go at your own pace. At any point, if you need a break, you come back to this child's pose. Now keep your legs as they are. Walk your hands to the right. Put your left hand on top of the right. So you feel a little stretch through the left side of your body. Walk it to the left side. Put the right hand on top of the left. Now bring it up to center to a tabletop position, up to your hands and knees. Inhale, arch the back, gaze up for cow pose. And then exhale, tuck your chin in and round the back, push the floor away for cat. Starting to warm up our spine. Inhale as you arch, exaggerate the movement as much as you can. Exhale as you round. One more time. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Good. Find that neutral spine. Now peel the right arm up. Open the chest. Thread the needle. Thread the right arm through. Put your head down. Walking that left hand forward. And then from there, if you want a little more, walk it to the right. Bring it back in. Reset to your tabletop. Switch sides. Peel the left arm up. Thread it through. Walk the right hand forward. Maybe over to the left. Back to your hands and knees, tabletop position. Now opposite arm and leg, extend your right arm forward, left leg back. Use your core to balance. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. One more time, knee to elbow. And then extend it out, first back bend really. Reach around, see if your right hand can grab that left foot, kick it back, find that stretch. Extend it back out, set it down, and then we'll switch sides. Left arm, right leg. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to extend. One more time. Knee to elbow. And then extend it out. See if your left hand can find that right foot and kick it back and find that back bend there. Let go. Stretch it out. Place it down. Now let's come right into our first down dog. Plant your hands shoulder width, tuck your toes, lift your hips up, feet are hips width, and bend one leg at a time. So as you bend the right leg, you're pushing your left heel to the mat, stretching into that left calf and hamstring. Then you switch, bend the left leg and push your right heel down. 
Pedal out your feet a couple more times. Notice how the backs of the legs feel. And then you can do the same thing with the arms. Bend one elbow at a time. When you feel ready to settle into your down dog, press the weight to your heels. Push the chest back, shoulders away from the ears. Walk your feet up to meet your hands. Ragdoll at the front so your feet stay hips width. Bend your knees and grab opposite elbows. Let yourself hang. Maybe shake your head. Yes and no. Relax your neck. And then you can sway a bit side to side. Shift the body weight from the right foot to the left foot. Maybe also swaying forward and back from the balls of the feet to the heels. Release your arms. Roll yourself all the way up to stand. Keep your feet hips width for now. Lift your arms up at the top. Grab your left wrist. Pull it to the right. Create that side body stretch. And then switch. Grab your right wrist. Pull it to the left. Back to center. Now interlace the fingers or hold on to a strap or a towel. Open up your chest. Bend your knees a little bit. Fold forward. Keeping the hands interlaced. Release your hands down. Inhale to a flat back. As you exhale, step back to your plank position. First one, we're going to all put the knees down for the modified version. Hug your elbows in and come down to the floor. Modified chaturanga. Now, press down through the tops of the feet. Engage your quads. Just so you feel the kneecaps lift, but the tops of the feet stay down. And lift your chest for a low cobra. For this first one, see if you can even lift your hands off the floor. Finding that small back bend. Put the hands down, lower down. Now come up halfway, medium cobra, so there's a little bit more weight in the arms. Shoulders down, elbows are still bent, legs are still engaged, lower down. Now full cobra, still don't straighten the arms, just go about three quarters of the way up. So in cobra, the elbows stay a little bent, and then come down. Push up to your knees, to that modified plank, downward facing dog. Now, if you need to modify the chaturanga or when we get to up dog, you can modify up dog with cobra. Remember, keep that in mind as we flow. Or you can just always go back to down dog. Look forward, step or hop, both feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. Gaze up, maybe those palms touch. Exhale, with a flat back, swan dive down. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, step back to plank. If you want to stay on your toes, you go halfway down, chaturanga, and hug those elbows in. Flip over the feet, inhale for up dog, so the arms are straight, but the knees are off of the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. Same thing, look forward, hop or step to the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, swan dive all the way back down. Inhale, flat back, plant your hands. Exhale, jump or step, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. One more time, look forward, step or hop to the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, swan dive all the way back down. Inhale as you lengthen, exhale, step or jump, chaturanga. Good, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Now just hold, check in with your down dog, press into your heels. Lift the right leg up, open the hip, bend the leg. Maybe draw a few circles with the ankle or the leg, just get a nice stretch. Straighten your legs, square the hip, step it between your hands, low lunge, put your left knee down. Now as many steps as you need to make sure that knee is over the ankle. Start with your hands on the thigh and sink into this hip flexor. Now you can stay there or lift your arms up, start to add a little bit more of a back bend, but don't change anything in the legs. Maybe press the palms together as you look up. Lower the hands down, half splits. Straighten the right leg, flex your right foot and fold towards the right leg. Now let's rebound the legs so we can put the hands down. Step back to chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side.
side, lift the left leg up and open the hip and the leg, maybe move the leg or the ankle, anything that feels good here. Straighten your legs, square your hip, step your left foot between your hands, low lunge, put the right knee down, start with the hands on that left thigh, now we're starting to sink into that right hip flexor. Good, you can stay here or lift your arms up, gaze up, maybe bring those palms together. Half splits, bringing the hands down, straighten your left leg, flex your left foot, toes go straight up and then fold towards that left leg. Bring your nose as close to the leg as you can. Rebend the legs, so you can put your hands back down, step back to chaturanga, exhale halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog, exhale back to down dog. Lift your right leg up with a straight leg, square hip. Step your right foot between your hands. Again, as many steps as you need to get it all the way up there. You can come up to the fingertips to help you. Now this time, stay on the ball of the back foot as you come up, crescent and lunge. Hips are square to the front. Anytime if you need to modify a lunge, you can always put that back knee down. Now we're gonna open to warrior two, pivot the back heel flat, open your arms out like a T. Gaze at that right hand, flip your right palm up, Put your left hand on your left thigh, reverse warrior, reach backwards, stretch that right side body, then windmill the hands down to the floor and step back. Chaturanga, any variation you want. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side, lift your left leg up, step in between your hands, crescent lunge, stay on the ball of the back foot, engage that back leg, reach the arms up. Hips are square to the front when we're in crescent lunge. Now we open the hips when we come to warrior two, pivoting the back heel down, gazing out towards that left middle finger. Flip the left palm up, inhale as you reverse your warrior, stretch the side body, exhale, windmill the hands to the front, step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Look forward, step or hop to the front to Malasana prayer squat. Turn your toes out, drop your hips down, bring your hands to prayer. Use your elbows, open up the inner thighs, press the chest forward. You can always go wider with the feet if you need to. If you want to open the arms, slide your right shoulder inside the right knee and peel the arms open. Back to center, take it the other way, opening the arms. Good, back to center. Now hands down, straighten your legs, bring your feet in parallel, hips with distance. Peace sign, fingers grab your big toes. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, fold. Bend the knees as much as you need to so you can hold those toes and then pull yourself towards the legs. You can stay here a little longer if you're enjoying the stretch or if you wanna practice your bakasana crow pose, bring your hands shoulder width. Walk your feet back a little bit and bring them together. Lift up onto your tippy toes, bend your knees and put them on your triceps. And you bend your arms a little bit to make a shelf. And then look forward and keep leaning forward. Maybe one foot lifts, maybe both feet lift. Push the floor away. We're really active through the arms, through the core, focusing the gaze. Remember, the arm balances are always optional. We're gonna take a vinyasa, however you wanna get there. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lift your right leg up, step it between your hands, but this time we're coming into warrior one. So bring your back heel, spin it flat, but turn your left foot in 45 degrees and then reach the arms up. So that your hips are square to the front, but the back heel is on the ground. So it's probably a little bit shorter stance than whatever you had for your crescent. Interlace the fingers behind the back, open up the chest. Bow forward, humble warrior. Torso can be on the thigh or maybe that shoulder comes right to the inside of it. And then maybe over time your head gets closer to the ground. Come back up to your warrior one, reach your arms up. Now open to warrior two, we're gonna have to move that back foot out a little bit wider and line up right heel to left arch. Flip your right palm up, inhale reverse. Exhale, side angle, right elbow to the thigh, left arm up. Or extended side angle, right hand to the floor. Maybe that left arm reaches forward, palm facing down. Now 
Lift back up to warrior two. Inhale as you reverse your warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands to the front and step back. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lift the left leg up and step it forward to your warrior one. Pivot the right heel flat, turn it in 45 degrees, squaring the hips as best you can towards the front. Interlace the hands behind your back. Try to put the other thumb on top from whatever you did on the first side, if you remember. Open the chest and bow forward. Humble warrior. Again, maybe right on top of the thigh or towards the inside of it, but still stay close to the leg. Come all the way back up. Lift your arms up, warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Widen the stance and open the hips. Line up left heel to right arch. Flip your left palm up. Inhale as you reverse your warrior. Exhale, side angle. Left elbow to the left thigh with the right arm straight up to the ceiling. Or extended side angle. Left hand coming down. Maybe that right arm reaching forward. Lift back up, warrior two. Inhale to reverse, exhale, windmill the hands down, step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Now bring your knees down, we're going to do camel pose, so we want the knees right under the hips. We're going to do it two times. First one, hands are going to stay on the lower back. Fingers can point up or down, whatever is better for your wrists, okay? If you can go fingers pointing up, do it, but if it bothers your wrists, do like your hands are going in your pockets instead, okay? Now lift up. Once you've got your hands on your lower back, lift up. Create length on the sides of the waist. Squeeze your shoulder blades and elbows towards each other. Then start to arch back. But keep pushing your hips forward and lifting the chest up. You shouldn't feel any crunching or pain in your lower back. You want to use your whole spine, your whole body to back bend. Slowly come up and then take a moment and sit down. Now second time you can repeat hands on the back. Or if you get pretty far back there, you might put one or both hands on the heels, okay? And when you do that, you have to make sure you readjust and push the hips forward, okay? Don't just lean back. Come back up, round two, hands on the back, set it up the same. Maybe one hand, maybe both hands to the heels, and then push the hips forward. If you can't reach the heels, keep the hands on the lower back. Lift your chest up, push your thighs and your hip bones forward. Take another breath. If you put your hands on your heels, bring them back to your lower back. Slowly come up and then sit down on your feet. Take a moment to reset. When you feel ready, walk your hands out into a child's pose to help reset your spine. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. Now we're gonna lift the right leg up and open the hip and bend the leg. You can just hold here in this stretch or flip your dog, bringing the right foot to the floor. Pivot the left foot around, reach the right arm forward and lift the hips up, find that big back bend. Look down, flip back over, three-legged dog. Step your right foot between your hands for a crescent lunge position, high crescent lunge. Good, open to warrior two, pivot the back heel down. Inhale as you reverse. Now as you exhale, set up for half moon. Walk your right hand forward six to eight inches in front of that baby toe, maybe on a block. Flex your left foot. The traditional version here, both legs are straight. If you want to add the back bend, show pass. Now you bend the left leg, left hand tries to grab the outside of that ankle or foot. You kick your heel away from you and push your chest forward. It's like dancer pose turned on its side. You're trying to make a back bend, a big circle shape. Take another moment. If you're holding the foot, let go, straighten it back out to that regular half moon, then step back, warrior two. Good, inhale as you reverse, hold it there, straighten your right leg, reverse triangle. Now as you come up for triangle, bring your left foot in an inch or two, take your hips, shift them back, and reach forward. Right hand, shin, ankle, or foot, left arm up. If you can easily touch the foot, maybe you think about putting the hand on the floor on the outside of the ankle, right behind it. Let's lift all the way up. We're going to 
going to come back to warrior two. So move your back foot out an inch or two and re-bend that front leg, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Now other side, lift the left leg up, open the hip, bend the leg. You can stay here or flip your dog, pivoting the feet around, lifting the hips up, reaching that left arm forward. Look down, flip back around to a three-legged dog. Step your left foot between your hands, starting in crescent lunge on the ball of that back foot as you reach the arms up. Open to warrior two, pivoting the back heel down. Flip your left palm up, reverse your warrior, and then reach forward for half moon. First, just find your balance in your regular half moon. Left fingertips on the floor block, right hip is open, flex the foot. You can stay there or you can add the back bend. Show pasana, right hand to the right ankle, kick that heel back, push the chest forward, exaggerate that back bend shape as much as you can. Focus your gaze on one point. Now, as you let go, first go back to that half moon, take a breath, then step back, warrior two, and adjust. If you didn't quite land in that nice long warrior two, adjust your feet. Reverse warrior, stay there, straighten your front leg, reverse triangle. As you come up, bring your right foot in, just an inch or two, shift your hips back, and reach forward, tree konasana. Left hand anywhere on the left leg, and maybe it goes to the floor. If it does go to the floor, it should be on the outside of that ankle. Right arm straight up to the ceiling. Lift back up. Now come back to warrior two. Move your back foot out a couple inches. Rebend that front leg. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Step back. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lift your right leg up, we're gonna bring it into lizard. Step your right foot outside that right hand, put your back knee on the ground, and then try to get your elbows down if you can to the floor. And just take a few moments here to stretch into your hips. Now if there's any variations you wanna add in, feel free to take those. Otherwise, I'm just going to go back to down dog, shake it out, reset, and then we'll switch sides. Lift the left leg up, step it outside that left hand, as many steps as you need, right at the edge of the mat there. Put your right knee down and untuck the right toes. Lizard pose, hands or elbows or blocks on the inside of that left foot, now stretching into that left hip. Press back up to your hands. Again, any variations you add on the other side, take that or just meet me in down dog. Step to the front, roll yourself up to stand, one vertebra at a time, and then step to face the long edge of your mat. And you want your feet maybe a couple feet apart, depends how tall you are, but your feet should be parallel, all 10 toes pointed to the side. Hands to your back, just like we did for camel. We'll take a little back bend and look up. And then fold forward. Walk your hands through the legs. Straddle, forward, fold. Stretching the hamstrings. If your head is on the floor and you're comfortable with headstand, put your hands and your head in a triangle. Make sure you're on the top of the head, not your forehead. Okay, neck is nice and straight. Elbows are 90 degrees. My hands right now are in the same line as my feet. But to go up to my headstand, I like to walk my feet back a little bit. It's a little bit easier that way. Lift my heels up. Lift all the way up to the tippy toes. Use my abs to lift and not momentum. Flexing the feet, going up with a straddle. No jumping ever involved in the headstand. All core strength so that we stay lighter on the top of the head. We don't put any pressure on the neck or the joints. Reach for those toes. Squeeze your inner thighs. Active legs. If you went upside down, straddle the legs, flex the feet, and slowly come down.
And then we'll meet where we started, everyone in that forward fold. So walk both hands over to the left leg, grab your ankle or calf, pull your nose over to the left leg. Walk it to the right, pull your nose to the right leg. And then bring it to center, frog or straddle split. So if you're coming to frog, you'll come down to the knees and slide those knees apart, flex your feet and come down to the elbows. And you want a 90 degree angle with that hip joint. Okay, ankle in line with knee, hip in line with knee. So you're not pushing too far forward or back, you're right in the middle. If you'd rather be in your straddle splits, you come up to your feet. Remember, it's the standing version. So you start standing and it just goes as wide as you can, sliding those feet apart, maybe coming down to the elbows. Still stretching into the inner thighs. This one's a little bit deeper. So if you find this is just too much for today, go back to the knees for your frog. Okay, take a few more deep breaths here. Come back up to your hands. If you're on your knees, come up to your feet. Carefully walk your feet back into where we started and just gently bend one knee at a time. Move your hips side to side, shake it out a little bit. And then we'll find a flat back, bend both knees, hands to hips, slowly come up. Very good, step to the front. Now, dance or pose without the strap and then second time, if you have the strap, we'll put the strap on the foot. And the dance or pose without the strap, left arm goes up, your right hand, you can go outside or inside. I like to go inside the ankle because I get a better stretch in the chest and the shoulder. So you decide, focus the gaze, and then start to lift that right leg up. Doesn't matter how high it goes, focus on the balance first. Release, switch sides. Right arm up, left hand inside or outside. Start with the knees together, find your balance, and then slowly kick that left leg up. Dance or pose. Good, release. Now, you can just repeat that a second time on each side, or if you have a strap, a yoga strap, put a little loop in it and put your right foot in it. Make sure the strap is tight, right, so that you know, your foot doesn't come out. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see. I start with the strap in my right hand because the strap is on my right foot. Then I'm gonna point my right elbow up right next to my ear, and then I start to walk one hand over the other down the strap until I feel like I can't go any further, and then I hold. Now, once I've gone as far as I can, I kick the foot in the strap to put some tension to make it easier to balance, and it helps pull my elbows a little bit behind my ears, getting that deeper stretch in the lat. You wanna keep your elbows close together if you can. Focus the gaze. This overhead grip is what makes this version of the back bend harder. And then when you're ready, you release and switch sides. We put the strap in the left foot, we start with it in the left hand and the hands up by the shoulder. And then you bring that elbow up and you start to walk one hand over the other. This side sometimes a little bit tighter for me. So you just hold it wherever you get, right? It doesn't matter if it's the same as the other side or what it looks like. Put some tension in the strap, focus your gaze. When you've held it about the same as the first side, carefully try not to fling it, carefully release it and put your strap off to the side. If you need a quick sip of water, get some water. And then we'll meet standing at the top of our mat, hands and feet together, reset, stand up tall. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale to your up dog. Exhale, down dog. Now we're gonna shift to a plank position and then come all the way down to the floor. Forehead down, take your arms by your hips, palms facing down like airplane. Squeeze the legs together and then lift everything up. So moving into back bends again. This time you're really strengthening the back to lift the chest, lift the legs, squeeze those glutes, hold it here. Release, let one ear come to the mat, let everything relax. Now you can either repeat that or add on by interlacing the fingers behind your back. Squeeze the legs together, lift back up and hold. Release, bring the other ear to the mat, relax. Now, bow pose, Dhanurasana, or one of the other two we just did if you can't reach the feet. 
For bow, we go outside the ankles there, flex the feet, knees and feet about hips width distance apart, kick through the shins to lift the chest. Maybe rock a little forward and back and then push those quads down, lift the chest, kick back strongly through the legs. Make sure you can breathe, hold it here. Release, bring one ear down. Windshield wiper your shin side to side. Release the lower back. And then when you feel ready, press it back to a child's pose and reset your spine. Now we're gonna do more back bends, but we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do them from our back. So just have a seat. We'll start with bridge and then we'll do wheel and then I'll give you some options, okay? You might not make it to wheel yet though. If you need to just keep doing bridge multiple times, stick with bridge. Don't force the wheel, okay? So everyone in bridge first. Feet hips with distance. Try to touch your heels with your longest finger. <coughs> Excuse me. Lift the hips up. Palms can be flat, but if you can reach, try to interlace the fingers, wiggle your shoulders underneath and then push down through the arms to lift the hips up. Just the fingers are interlaced, the palms don't need to touch. We're going for that chest opening, so really try to get those shoulders underneath you. Hold it here. Unlace, come down. So, bridge is always the modification for wheel, so if you need to stick with that, stick with that. If you want to try wheel, but your shoulders just feel a little tight, sometimes it helps to take your hands off your mat a little bit wider apart, and that will make it easier, okay? You can also do wheel just to the top of the head if you want. Bring your hands by your shoulders, elbows point up, fingers point towards your shoulders. Lift the hips, maybe push to the top of the head and hang out there. If you need to adjust your hands, adjust your hands. If you feel good there, push into your hands and maybe lift the head. Working towards straightening the arms, maybe one day also straightening the legs a little more. Push your chest through your arms so that you're not just sinking into your lower back. You're stretching the whole front side of your body. Tuck your chin when you come down so you don't hit your head, slowly release. Now you can stick with the first one, bridge, the second one, wheel, or you can lift one leg up for wheel. If you're gonna lift one leg up, start with the feet hips width, but then once you get all the way up into the wheel, that's when we'll walk the feet together, lift one leg, and switch. When we come down, we bring the feet back to hips width. It's hard to balance with the feet together. All right, set it up one more time. Bridge or wheel, optional lifting the leg. If you're gonna lift the leg, walk your feet together, lift one leg up, as high as you can, point the toes. And then set it down right in the middle and maybe switch and lift the other leg up. Good, set it down, bring your feet to hips width first, then tuck your chin, carefully come down in your own time. Lying down, butterfly soles the feet together, knees open wide and just close your eyes. Maybe arms relax on the floor, the stomach, or overhead. Bring that heart rate down because back bends definitely make the heart rate go up. But this pose also helps to bring the natural curve of the spine back, the natural arch to the lower back. Slow down your breathing. Happy baby, when you're ready, grabbing for the inside edges of the feet. Flex the feet, lengthen your tailbone down, actively push down with your hands. It's like you're trying to push your knees towards the floor on the outside of the ribs to open up those hips. Then if you want to rock a little side to side, you can. Good, hug your knees in, rock and roll forward and back two or three times, massage your spine, and come up to a seated position. Seated forward fold to help counter some of those back bends. Extend the legs straight out, flex the feet, sit up tall, and then fold. If you have that strap, you can always use that. You can hold your legs, your feet, your wrists, whatever you can reach there. Slowly come up, let's take a vinyasa to reset. Cross your legs, jump or step back to chaturanga, low push-up. Inhale to up dog, notice how that feels. Exhale to down dog. And we're gonna set up for pigeon. If for any reason you need to modify pigeon today, you can lay on your back for a number four stretch. Otherwise, lift the right leg 
leg up, bend the knee as you bring it forward, put your right knee behind the right wrist, slide that left leg back, okay? Square the hips and try to get them on the floor as close as you can. They may not be on the floor yet, that's okay. And for now, this right foot is close to you, but you're not sitting on it. Use your right hand to balance, take your left hand back, grab the left foot and pull it towards you and stretch your quad. This is a great place to hold. If you wanna work a little bit more back bending, you can work on king pigeon by putting the strap over the foot. And then just like we did for dancer, you start with it in the right hand. Now, if your hips are really high off the floor, you might need to just keep your right hand on the floor and hold onto the strap with one hand, okay? If you can balance there, you can try walking both hands down the strap maybe dropping the head even looking up if your balance feels good finding that king pigeon imagining one day your hands and feet would touch for that full back bend but usually you have to get your hips all the way down first so it's a combination of getting that hip opening in the pigeon the shoulder opening and then also the back bend part when you're done release your foot or your strap and then we'll fold forward here for our regular half pigeon or one leg pigeon if your hips are all the way on the floor, you could start to think about maybe inching that shin a little more forward, but no further than a 90 degree angle, flexing that foot. If that puts pain in your knee, bring your foot back in. And remember, at any point, you can still lay on your back for that figure four or number four stretch. Start to walk your hands in. Now, if you want another vinyasa, maybe you take that chaturanga in between sides. Maybe just go back to a three-legged dog. Any movements that help you to reset. And then eventually, we'll all meet in down dog. Switching sides. Lift the left leg up. Bend that knee as you bring it forward for your pigeon. Right? Put that left knee behind the left wrist. That just helps ensure that it's in line with your hip and it's not too far to the side or too far to the middle. Start with the quad stretch. Left hand down or fingertips. Right hand reaches back. Grab that foot and pull it towards you. It's okay if you need to lean a little to the side just to get that foot. Okay? Now, if your hips are up high again, maybe stay here. I actually really love this stretch. Feels good on that back leg. But if you want to add that back bend for the last time, you can put that strap on the foot, put it in the same hand, and maybe hold here with the hand down. Or walk both hands back as far as you can on that strap and hold it there. Maybe you start to drop that head back, gazing up for king pigeon. When you've had enough of this pose, you let go of your foot or your strap, carefully set the strap to the side, and then fold forward for your regular pigeon, stretching into that hip. If you want to adjust where you place the shin, just make sure you flex that foot if you start to move it forward and make sure you don't feel any discomfort in your knee. Otherwise, keep the foot closer to you. And then fold. Let's walk the hands in. If you want one last chaturanga, take it. We're going to meet in our last down dog of the class. So anything that helps you to reset there. And notice in this last down dog how it feels compared to the beginning of the practice. What feels different in your body? What feels more open? Step to the front. Have a seat. We're going to take a seated twist to also help counter all those back bends. So left leg is out straight and step the right foot across. Now you can stay here or you can bend this left leg, tuck the heel next to your right hip. 
Your left arm hugs the knee or hook your elbow to the outside of the knee. Right fingertips behind you to help you sit up nice and tall as you twist. Bring it to center and switch. Whichever variation you took, take the same thing on the other side. Right leg straight, stepping the left foot across. You can stay there or you can bend that leg, tuck the heel next to you. And then maybe you're hugging the knee or hooking that right elbow to the outside of the thigh. Left fingertips behind you to help you sit up tall as you twist. Now untwist. Last seated stretch, let's bring it into a butterfly, Baddha Konasana. Soles the feet together, pull your feet in as close to as you can. Use your elbows, press those inner thighs down, and then fold. And you can keep holding on to the ankles, maybe the feet. Maybe just walk your hands as far forward as you can, reaching your face past your feet. Stretching into those inner thighs. But also you might feel it in your back, especially since we did all those back bends. That's okay. If it feels like a good stretch in the back, that's good. Slowly come up, bring your knees together, and then roll down onto your back. Now, similar shape to what we did seated. Take your arms out like a T. Cross your right leg over your left. Move your hips an inch or two to the right, and then let those knees fall to the left side. The right leg's crossed on top. Turn your gaze to the right. Now, if it's too intense with the legs crossed, just uncross them and drop the knees to the left. Coming into that spinal twist. Bring it to center and switch your legs. Cross the left leg over the right. Move your hips an inch or two to the left. Drop the knees to the right side. Turn your gaze to the left. And if you did a different variation on the other side, just make sure you repeat that here. Now bring everything to center and give your knees a squeeze. Wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a big hug, curling up into a tight little ball. And then letting it go, coming into Shavasana, our final relaxation. Extend your legs out long. Let the feet fall open. Arms relaxing alongside you, palms facing up. Take those shoulders, shrug them down away from the ears to help keep your neck long. As you close your eyes, clear away all of your thoughts. Take a nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go and letting those muscles relax into the floor. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Just start to bring some small movements back to your body. Maybe you draw a couple circles with your wrists and ankles in both directions, or maybe gently moving your head a little bit side to side. Anything that feels good to you. When you feel ready, reach those arms overhead, reach the legs long, create that nice full body stretch, getting as tall as you can. And keep the eyes closed, but hug the knees into the chest and roll over to one side, coming into a fetal position. Be 
Use the hands to help press you all the way up into a comfortable seated position. Cross your legs, sit up nice and tall. And bring your hands together at heart center, Anjali Mudra. Take a couple last deep breaths, scanning the body, noticing how it feels after today's yoga practice. Let's take one more nice deep inhale through the nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go. Lift your hands to your forehead, your third eye center, and bowing forward. Namaste. Thank you. Those of you who are able to join live, I always enjoy seeing you guys on here. Uh, now Instagram, I guess, I don't know, something changed this week, but it saves these on IGTV. So I guess they're up more than 24 hours, which is great for those of you who can't do it right away, right? But it's not on the stories, but it's on my regular posts and on the IGTV. And then I've also been uploading some of these to YouTube, which is Rachel Silverman Yoga. So if you go to youtube.com, you can find slash Rachel Silverman Yoga, tons of yoga workout videos. Some of them are years old, but they're still good, right? Um, and then some of them from the past couple of weeks. So as long as you guys keep enjoying it, I'll keep doing this for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments, always let me know. Have a wonderful day.